As the Yachtyar began establishing their hierarchies after the engineers dropped the bioweapon on their homeworld, variations emerged in their mutations. Some Yachtyar retained smaller statures while maintaining significant strength and durability. Conversely, others grew to towering heights, reaching 10 to 12 feet. The smaller Yachtyar faced notable disadvantages in their culture, as the larger ones, despite their size, exhibited remarkable speed powered by fast-twitch muscle fibers that allowed explosive movements without sacrificing stamina, unlike humans. Picture the intensity of a tiger's rapid lunges as it comes to devour you, maintaining a relentless pace without succumbing to fatigue. Amidst these dynamics, one Yautja stood out, a colossal figure destined to become the reigning king among them. All adult males commenced their journey as members of the hunter class, able to proficiently kill same size or smaller prey. While some smaller Yautja remained in this hunter status, advancing through the ranks led to the elite hunter class. To attain this distinction, individuals had to successfully engage and defeat xenomorphs in battle, marking their face and helmets with the blood symbol and amass years worth of trophies. Achieving elite status required exceptional skill and experience. Surviving centuries granted a Yautja the esteemed title of an ancient, also known as an elder, and would get access to more technology, for example, full body armor and two mounted plasma cannons instead of one. Elders held a crucial role in Yautja society, serving as advisors and, if they so desired, establishing and leading their own clans. Their significance lay in passing down hunting techniques and wisdom to empower new hunters in mastering the art of battle with lethal efficiency. The deadly reputation of the predators stemmed from this legacy of transmitting hunting knowledge through the generations never being lost and adapted over millennia. And then there's the king, revered as the grand elder among the Yautja. Towering in stature, the king wasn't merely one of the largest Yautja. He possessed strategic brilliance in waging wars against other races. Only the king held the authority to mobilize the Yautja for conflicts with other species, his tactical genius guiding their endeavors. The king's legendary reputation extended beyond his leadership. He had personally vanquished hundreds of xenomorphs and even claimed victory over a queen xenomorph. Uniquely, he fashioned his throne from the skeletal remains of the conquered queen, a testament to his triumph over these deadly adversaries. Each prospective new king was obligated to engage in a harrowing challenge, the simultaneous conquest of a xenomorph queen and the reigning king. This daunting task not only signified their readiness for leadership, but also mandated the creation of a new skeletal throne. Only by vanquishing a queen and the current ruler could the successor claim their place on the regal seat, ensuring the continuation of the Yautja's legacy through a cycle of fearsome rulers. Adding to his accolades, the king possessed the skull of an engineer, an exceedingly rare feat considering engineers are very elusive and could dispatch Yautja with minimal effort. The first king not only orchestrated the initial counterattack against the engineers, but also mastered the art of utilizing xenomorph queens on Earth. These deadly creatures became instrumental in the Yautja's initiation process, enabling new hunters to ascend the ranks and continue the legacy. Before ascending to the role of the king, he embarked on a solitary mission, tracking engineers that led him to the distant planet LV-223. In the annals of Prometheus, this planet served as a temple for the engineers, housing the final iteration of the perfected black goo. The question arose, why designate a temple and what engendered the engineer's profound reverence for this enigmatic substance? To unravel this mystery, we journey back in time. Examining the engineer's interactions with primordial earth, where only water, mountains and scant grass existed, we deduce that this ancient species dates back at least 460 million years, if not more. The black goo, originally a fungus developed for self-protection against non-botanical life, played a pivotal role in the engineer's evolution. It is postulated that the engineers discovered a planet with no mammalian life and discovered this unique fungus, leveraging their mastery of bioengineering, modified it for personal enhancement. Remarkably, they achieved physical augmentation, growing larger and stronger, without sacrificing intellectual prowess. However, the one unresolved facet remained their heightened aggression, an attribute they couldn't mitigate. This unresolved aggression manifested in their hostile disposition towards other life forms. This narrative aligns seamlessly with the engineer speculative homeworld on Planet 4, 
where a distinct group of engineers, smaller in size and possessing different eyes, abstained from genetic enhancement. In contrast, the genetically altered space jockeys or pilots ventured forth to conquer worlds, securing resources and technology for their civilization. Although it is rumored that these pilots have a concealed residence and their own society on another undisclosed planet, the specifics of this location remain shrouded in secrecy. Stealthily venturing into LV-223, the King embarked on a reconnaissance mission to discern the engineer's activities. Cloaked and moving silently, he came upon the chamber housing the vials. Scanning the room, his gaze fell upon a mural depicting a deacon, a subject of significant importance to the engineers to be discussed and explored in the next video. The King, in his covert exploration, discovered coordinates detailing the ship's intended destination, Earth. Shockingly, the engineers weren't merely planning to eradicate humans, they intended to employ the pathogen to breed the ultimate killing machines. These lethal creatures were to be unleashed on Yatya Prime and other worlds resisting their conquest, cementing their ruthless campaign across the cosmos. The King, now aware of the engineers' plan, proceeded to sabotage the temple, unleashing the pathogen that would prove fatal to all engineers on the planet. As he prepared to depart, he confronted an engineer in a final showdown. Removing his helmet, he carefully set it down, activating the recording function. The king adhered to his personal code when engaging in combat. For each new species encountered, he insisted on confronting them without the aid of technology for the first kill, armed only with a spear, a testament to his skill in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In this confrontation, the king emerged victorious, albeit bearing numerous fractures and contusions. After following his customary ritual, any secondary encounter he would swiftly dispatch any adversary deemed worthy in combat, leaving no room for games. The king, a master of stealth, approached his targets cloaked and went straight for the kill shot without hesitation or unnecessary theatrics. Many of the king's trophies would remain oblivious to their demise, unaware that they had fallen prey to him, as his unparalleled stealth and cunning allowed him to strike without leaving a trace. His style of hunting was such that a considerable number of his conquests would not even recognize their killer in the final moments. The king's ability to move undetected and swiftly secure his trophies contributed to his legend as a masterful and elusive hunter. Upon returning to Yautja Prime, the king carried a vial on his ship, unveiling the engineer's nefarious scheme to his people. He articulated a plan that involved a visit to Earth, utilizing the vial to infect humans, willingly sacrificing themselves to entities they deemed as gods, the Yautja. Temples constructed on Earth served a dual purpose. Not only did they prepare Yautja for potential xenomorph invasions, but they also imparted essential hunting skills to these ultimate killers, the xenomorphs. The elaborate strategy unfolded as a symbiotic alliance, where the Yautja capitalized on the humans' reverence to fortify their own strengths and readiness against future extraterrestrial threats. Now to why the pilot's DNA was so special. The altered black goo or fungus within their blood gave them the extraordinary ability to create distinct forms of life. Humans share nearly 50% of their DNA with fungi, which played a pivotal role in the intricate web of life, sustaining not only human survival, but also contributing to the well-being of plants and animals. Contrary to the misconception that the engineers came to Earth to seed it with life, their true purpose was to undergo a sacred ritual of self-sacrifice. Having conquered death, the engineers established a maximum life cycle of 150 years. Beyond this span, they embraced the ritualistic use of the black goo, one version of the substance that granted prolonged life and the other death that paved the way for subsequent generations to thrive, preventing the stagnation of old ideologies. The choice of Earth for this ritual raises intriguing questions. Some speculate that the engineer's origin planet might have been Mars. Mars is believed to have harbored life 500 million years before Earth exhibited complex life forms, suggesting that the engineers could be a billion-year-old species. This intricate tapestry of sacrifice and longevity adds layers to the enigmatic narrative of the engineers and their cosmic existence. In the distant past, the engineers evolved into a Type II civilization, prompting their departure from our solar system due to its tumultuous history. 
Meteorite impacts and solar flares wreaked havoc, rendering Mars eventually uninhabitable. Meanwhile, Earth, in its early stages of life, held the promise of future colonization for the engineers. As we delve into the next video, we'll explore the significance of the Deacon and unravel the mysteries behind why the engineers bestowed it with great importance and why they delayed attacking the Yautja. Additionally, we'll witness the coronation of the Predator King, who will lead the Predators into their first war against the Amengi. The question remains, why embark on this war? Comment, share, like and subscribe to find out.